Okay, in the last video, I mapped the head onto the body and then started doing uh, color adjustments using image adjustments for levels and for actually just levels so far. I'm in levels here now for the back of the creature. And in this, I want to limit the highlights a little bit. It's because it's catching a lot of light. And I wanted to darken those midtones a little bit. It came in like this. I wanted to dim them down just a bit. Okay, now we've got kind of the red fur color here and here, but it's very yellow here. So this can be adjusted with the temperature of the lighting before I go to something crazy like hue saturation where I can just play with the overall color. I want to go to always in this order, levels first, we just did that, then color balance. And this is where you can set the temperature of the lighting. So, so I always start in mid-tones and I'm going to push it away from yellow and towards blue, just in the mid-tones. You can see that takes a lot of the yellow out, but you can't overdo it. It's just slight nudges. I'm going to move it a little away from red and into, well, yeah, a little into cyan, just in the mid-tones. In the highlights, I'll go back towards red. And then do I want it to go more green or more magenta? Maybe just a tiny bit more magenta. Now let's go to the highlights. And I'm going to warm them up. I'm going to push the highlights just a little bit towards yellow, a little more towards red, and to counteract it, just a tiny bit towards green, maybe not quite so much towards red. You can also type in values here. Sometimes with these browser-based adjustments, using the slider is a little frustrating. And now the shadows. Because I moved the highlights towards the warms, I want to move the shadows towards the cools. You always want to contrast the two because it gives you more dimension. And you can see that already is kind of turning the form around, helping it blend in. And sometimes you can't tell if you should do anything without pushing it both directions. All right, big difference there in the levels of both the bottom there and the levels and color balance of the top. Now let's do the color balance of those legs. And I'm doing this before I do a clean cutout because it's going to help. It makes it more forgiving. So let's go to color balance. And I'm going to start with the midtones. I wish that Photopede started with the midtones in its default opening. Okay, now to the highlights. Going to warm those up a bit. And then in the shadows, going to cool it down. Now that difference wasn't so pronounced, but it does help. Okay, now I've done those. Now I can start blending internal edges. Talked a lot about these 100% soft edged erasers on the outside. But now to make the things blend, I'm going to erase the top layer from, or erase away from that to reveal the bottom layer. So. 100% very soft edged eraser with pressure sensitivity turned on. And now I'm going to take, once that hard edge is down, I'm going to take it down to less than 40% and just start transitioning it. And it just works like a charm. Blending soft into soft textures. Because it's helping everything to come through the um, the lighting the shading everything 
Now, unfortunately, this squirrel is gray on the back and red on the bottom. So I might need to actually go in and saturate a little bit of it so that it matches a little bit better. So I'm going to use the sponge tool on that layer, this one. And I'm going to change it from desaturate to saturate, which is not something you usually need to do, but in this case, it's going to be helpful. Really big, soft brush. Gonna add some saturation. So whatever color is in there, in that gray, I'm going to bring out. Unfortunately, there it's bringing out purple, which is not great. So that when I overlap it with this back piece, we can have something a little bit more interesting. I can also fix this with clone stamp, and we'll get into that. When it gets too colorful, I can take that sponge back to desaturate. Remember, this is right at 20, and I usually want to work at less than 20 because it's really easy just to get this to gray. I can also desaturate from this top layer a little bit, which helps quite a bit. So you have control of every pixel this way. I also might want to shift. I have the haunch there and the haunch there. I want them to match. So I can do that with control T and with warp. Without changing my anatomy too much. So again, it's all from understanding the anatomy and the intentions of your sketch. All right, so that looks pretty pretty blended. So you have this pattern of one animal and this the legs of another animal. And I just need to do some clone stamping and things and sharpening, but I'll get there. I might go back to the legs and just revisit now their levels, image adjustment levels, because I think I can get away with goosing their darks a little bit. And that's all I need. Maybe even darkening them in the midtones just a little bit. Okay. Other components I wanted to use. The tail. So I'm replacing the tail. I don't want to use the chipmunk tail. I've got this red squirrel tail. I just don't like the position of the other one. So what am I going to do? I'm going to select around it. Well, let's grow it first best to grow and place while well, it's still a smart object. So control T, gonna take its opacity down, I'm gonna flip it, horizontally, let's see, let's see if this works. Match that angle, put it on top, and then grow it. Tilt it back a little. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Let's really grow it. Let's have a real tail. Okay, now that I've placed it, I'm going to make it 100%. I'm going to extend my canvas so that it's not at all cropped off. So what do I do? I go to image canvas size. I had to grow the canvas a lot here. I'm going to go ahead and make it 16 inches wide. It's still at 350 pixels per inch, so I've got plenty. And then I'm going to do a rough cutout of that tail. Quite rough. It's good to have overlap. Always good to have overlap. In fact, I might want that whole haunch in there. And then just Command-J, duplicate it, and get rid of the smart object underneath. And you can see how that tail is already going to line up pretty well. I can... Warp it now again. Control T. Gonna be on the right layer. I come over to the 
issue. Like I don't love the tail I had. The answer is always just posit something over the top of it. Find a new element or internally composite, take something from the already have, make it bigger, adjust it. More layers is the answer. As long as you're using everything you're you're showing. Yay. Still have everything. Come on. So how many of you have laptops? And you have a phone. Anything with lithium batteries, the batteries develop a memory. So that's why I'm so bad about this. Because I try to run my battery out to 5% before I plug it in again. I will extend my computer life to about 15 years. But the computer warned you at 10%. And if you're always plugging in at 10%, then your battery can only last about nine years. So that's true. The way that electric cars get away from this is they have multiple batteries <laughs> backed up. All right, projector. All right, bit of a comedic error there. I let my battery get too low. So luckily, my screen shuts off before it loses all data. So plug it in, I'm, I'm back ready to go. So I was adjusting this. I've got it placed. I had transformed it. And now I want to blend it in. So all the kind of placing. I'm going to control T. And just make sure that everything is kind of lined up to make my blending easier so make that spine really match make the the highlight all of that kind of really match yeah I think it'll work okay now I'm going to use my eraser 100% soft edged because I got to get rid of this edge first, it's kind of lingering edge, and then lower opacity, below 40. Start biting away at it, letting the different layers kind of reveal themselves. You see how those textures start to blend in just beautifully with each other. Okay, now, how do I cut out that tail? Same way I've been doing it. Use the magic wand. You select on the white or the background. Sometimes you have to hold down shift to get multiples like this gray. I have contiguous unchecked just because this is such a, a clean background. I have a feather of 15 pixels. I'm not sure how it got to be that high. I can see how that works. And that trims my tail quite a bit, but it seems kind of necessary with all that white coming through it. So now I got to get rid of that other tail. So I'm going to go to that layer. I'm going to use my lasso. And I'm going to get quite a bit of overlap. loop around. Remember when I disconnected it from the back, that becomes important. And then delete. And for some reason my feather keeps growing. That's a phenomenon I haven't hadn't noticed before, but now it's a 44 pixel feather, which is maybe too extreme, honestly.